Hey, hey, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Devotions. This morning we're at Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 11. We're on Jesus being our high priest forever. Let's have some coffee. We'll pray. We'll get into God's word. Ooh, hot today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for your word. We pray that you would please help us. As we read your word, we pray that it would be like Honey to our lips, pure gold to our souls, a light to our path, a joy in our hearts. We pray, Father, that you would please help us. Give us a clear mind and give us hearts to be able to apply this in a good way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're at Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Whoop, getting my Bible stuck on stuff here. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 11. Here we go. So also Christ did not glorify himself becoming high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in his days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to everyone, or so to, <laughs> of eternal salvation to all who obey him called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Well, we got to ask ourselves our three questions. A, what's this about? B, what's the best verse to summarize this? And C, what are we called to do? So A, what is this about? What we've been going through about Jesus being our high priest, we looked at the qualifications for a high priest. He had to be of men, for men, appointed to that office. And it starts off with verse 5 that Christ didn't glorify himself. right? He didn't seize the office of high priest, but no, he was given it. Uh, he, this is a quote from Psalm 2-7, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And then from Psalm 110, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus was given this high priesthood. Why? What was his trial? What was his test? How was he made this high priest? By suffering. By suffering. That's what verses 7 through 9 are getting at. With vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and because he was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Right? You can remember Jesus on the Mount of Olives, pleading for the Lord to let this cup pass from him, but not his will be done, but yours. Right? Jesus crying out to his Father in heaven, but submitting knowing that he was going to suffer, knowing that as the high priest, he was going to know what it was like to taste God's wrath and curse for sin. And as our high priest, he was going to go and be the mediator between God and us. He was going to become a high priest who could not just suffer like us, not just sympathize with our weaknesses, but would actually suffer for us. And he did this not in the order of Levi. We'll get to that later. Not in the order of Aaron, but in the order of Melchizedek. He was called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much more to say and hard to explain. And some of these things are hard. you got to dig deep into your Old Testament and grab this out. We'll talk more about Melchizedek as that comes, because there's going to be more about Melchizedek. Uh, but what's this whole section about? Jesus truly becoming our high priest through his sufferings, right? made perfect in every way for us, willingly suffering. 
even though he was not born of ordinary generation, yet he suffered for us. So, what's the best verse to summarize this? Well, I've got verse 7, 8, and 9 underlined in my Bible. Maybe you would have something else underlined in yours. That's okay. Let's see. Calling. What are we called to do? Do we rest in the finished work of our high priest? Do we go to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our salvation, who laid down his life like a lamb to the slaughter for us? redeemed us at the cost of his own blood brought us into the new covenant do we trust in that high priest let's pray father we pray that we would trust in you rest in you hope in you love you all of our lives please lord care for us let us walk in your ways thank you thank you for giving us a great high priest jesus christ in his name we pray amen may the lord bless you may you walk in the joy and the peace that comes from following Jesus Christ, our great high priest. See you next time. Bye.